live from the Bill Graham Auditorium in San Francisco. It's the Cube covering Pure Storage Accelerate 2018. Brought to you by Pure Storage. Welcome back to the Cube. We are live at Pure Storage Accelerate 2018 in San Francisco. I'm Lisa. Prince Martin with Dave the Huvalante, and we're with David Hatfield, or Hat, the president of Pure Storage. Hat, welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you, Lisa, great to be here. Thanks for being here. The How fun is, is this? Awesome. This is great. Super oh, yeah. fun. Got to represent. We love the orange here. Always a good venue. Yeah. There's not yeah. enough orange. Well, I'm not the Bill as Graham, yet. I mean, it's a great venue, but not generally one for technology conferences. No, it's not. No, you guys are not conventional. So, so far, so good. But Thanks for keeping us out of Las Vegas for a change. <laughs> <laughs> Over say, my dead body, I think I've said once or twice before. <laughs> Speaking of. Love our customers. Customers in Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> of unconventional. Yeah. You've said recently, this is not your father's storage company. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, we just always want to do things a little bit less conventional. We want to be modern, we want to do things differently, we want to create an environment where it's community, uh, so our customers and our partners, prospective customers, can get a feel for what we mean by doing things a little bit more modern. Um, and so the whole orange thing is something that we all opt in for, but it's more about really helping transform customers' organizations, think differently, think out of the box. Um, and so we wanted to create a venue that, that forced people to think differently. And so the last three years, one was in a Pier 48, we transformed that. Last year was in a big steel workers, a you know, hundred year old steel manufacturing shipbuilding yard, which is now long since gone. But we thought the juxtaposition of that Big iron rust, you know, relative to what we're doing from a modern solid state perspective was a, was a good metaphor. And you know, here it's about making music. You know, how can we together as an industry you know, develop new things and develop new songs and really help transform our organization? So for those of you who don't know, spinning, spinning disc is known as spinning rust, right? Eventually, and that was so very clever sort of marketing. The more approach. data you put on it, the slower it gets and it gets really old and we wanted to get rid of that. We wanted to have everything be online in the data center. So that was the point. So, Hat, as you go around and talk to customers, yeah. they're going through a digital transformation, yep. you hear all this stuff about machine intelligence, artificial intelligence, whatever you want to call it. What are the questions that you're getting? CEOs, they want to get digital right. Yep. IT professionals are wondering what's next for them. What kind of questions and conversations are you having? Yeah, I think it's interesting. I was just in one of the largest financial services companies um, in New York, uh, and we met with a chief data officer. And the chief data officer reports to the CEO. Um, and he had right next to him the CIO. And so they have this, this development of you know, a recognition that moving into a digital world and trying to harness the power of data requires a business context. It requires uh, people that are trying to figure out how to extract value um, from the data. Uh, where does our data live? Um, but that's created a different organization, drives DevOps. I mean, if you're going to go through digital transformation, you're going to try and get access to your data, you have to be a software development house. And that means you're going to use DevOps. And so what's happened uh, from our point of view over the last 10 years is that those folks have gone to the public cloud because IT wasn't really meeting the needs uh, of what DevOps needed and what the data scientists were looking for. And so what we wanted to create uh, not only was a platform and a tool set that allowed them to bridge the gap, make things better today dramatically, but have a platform that gets you into the future, but also create a community and an ecosystem where um, people are aware of what's happening on the DevOps side and connect the dots between IT uh, and the data scientists. And so we see this exploding as companies digitize uh, and we, somebody needs to be there to help kind of bridge the gap. So what's your point of view and advice to the, that IT ops person who Maybe really good at provisioning LUNs. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, should they become more dev-like? Maybe ops dev? Totally. Uh, I mean, I, I think there's a huge opportunity to kind of advance your career. And a lot of what Charlie talked about and a lot of what we've been doing for nine years now, uh, coming up on nine years, is trying to make our customers heroes. And um, if you're going to, if data is a strategic asset, so much so they're actually going to think about putting it on your balance sheet, and you're hiring chief data officers, who knows more about the data than the storage and infrastructure team? They understand the limitations that we had to go through over the past. They've recognized you had to make trade-offs between performance um, uh, and cost. And you know, in a shared accelerated storage, platform where you have tons of I.O. and you can put all of your you know, applications pointing in at the same time, uh, you don't have to make those trade-offs. But the people that really know that you know, are the storage leads. Uh, and so what we want to do is you know, give them a path for their career um, to become strategic in their organization. Uh, Storage should be self-driving. Infrastructure should be self-driving. These are not things that, you know, in a boardroom people care about gigabytes and petabytes and petaflops and whatever, whatever metric. What they care about is how can they can change their business and have a competitive advantage? How can they can deliver better customer experiences? Um, how they can put more money on the bottom line, um, you know, through better insights, et cetera. And uh, we want to teach and work with 
um, and celebrate you know, data heroes you know, that are coming from the infrastructure side and connecting the dots. So the value of that data is obviously something that's new in terms of it being front and center. And the, the, so who determines the value of that data? You would think it's the business line. Yep. Uh, and so there's got to be a relationship between that IT ops person and, and the business line, which maybe heretofore was somewhat adversarial. Yeah. Uh, the business guys are calling, the clients are calling again. And, the business guys are saying, oh, IT, they're slow, they say no. So how are you seeing that relationship changing? It has to come together because you know, it does come down to you know, what are the insights that we can extract from our data? How much more data can we get online to be able to get those insights? Um, and that's a combination of improving the infrastructure uh, and making it easy um, and removing those, those trade-offs that I talked about, but also being able to ask the right questions. Um, and so a lot has to happen. You know, we have you know, one of the leaders you know, in DevOps uh, speaking tomorrow um, to go through, you know, here's what's happening on the software development and DevOps side. Here's what the data scientists are trying to get at. So our IT professionals understand the language, understand the, the problem set, uh, but they have to come together. Um, uh, we have Dr. Kate Harding uh, as, as well coming in uh, from MIT, who's brilliant, and thinking about AI. Well, there's only, you know, 0.5% you know, of all the data has actually been analyzed. You know, it's all in these piggy banks, as Bert talked about on stage. And so we want to get rid of the piggy banks and actually create it and make it more accessible and get more than 0.5% you know, of the data uh, to be usable, you know, bring as much of that online as possible because it's going to provide richer insights. Um, but up until this point, storage has been a bottleneck um, to, to making that happen. It was either too costly or too uh, uh, complex, you know, or wasn't performant enough. And with what we've been able to bring, you know, through solid state natively into sort of this platform is an ability to have all of that without the trade-offs. That number of half a percent, or less than half a percent of all data in the world is actually able to be analyzed yeah. is really, really small. I mean, we, we talk about, often you'll hear people say data's the lifeblood of an organization. Yeah. Well, it's really a business catalyst because- and oil. Right, but catalysts need to be applied to multiple reactions simultaneously. Yeah, yeah. And that's what a company needs to be able to do to maximize the value. Because yep. if you can't do that, there's no value in that. Right. How are you guys helping to kind of maybe abstract storage? We hear a lot, of, we heard the word simplicity a lot today from Mercedes yeah. Formula One, for example. Yeah. How are you partnering with customers to help them identify how, where do we start narrowing down to find those needles in the haystack that are going to open up new business opportunities, new services yeah. for our business? Well, I think, first of all, we, we recognize at Pure that you know, we, we want to be the innovators. We want to be the folks that are, you know, again, making things dramatically better today, but really future-proofing people for what you know, applications and insights they want to get in the future. Um, Charlie talked about the three-legged stool, right? There's innovations that's been happening in compute, there's innovations that have been happening over the years in networking, but storage hasn't really kept up. It literally was sort of the bottleneck you know, that was holding people back from being able to you know, feed the GPUs and the, and the compute that's out there to be able to extract the insights. So, um, we wanted to partner with the ecosystem, but we recognize an opportunity to remove the primary bottleneck, right? And if we can remove the bottleneck and we can partner with firms like NVIDIA and firms like um, um, Cisco, uh, where you integrate the solution and make it self-driving uh, so customers don't have to worry about it. They don't have to make the trade-offs in performance and cost on the back end, but it just is easy to stamp out. And so it was really great to hear ServiceNow and Keith walk through his story where he was able to get you know, a 3X level improvement um, and something that was simple to, to scale as their business grew um, without having an impact on the customer. So, so we need to be part of an ecosystem. We need to partner well, we need to you know, recognize that, uh, that we're a key component of it, because we think data's at the core, um, um, but we're only a component of it. Um, one analogy somebody shared with me when I first started at Pure was, you, know, you can date your compute uh, and networking partner, but you actually get married to your storage partner. And um, we think that's true because data's at the core of every organization, but it's making it available and accessible and affordable um, so you can leverage the compute and networking stacks to make it happen. You've used the word platform, and I want to unpack that a little bit. Okay. Platform versus product, right? We hear platform a lot today. Yeah. I think it's pretty clear that platforms beat products and that allows you to grow and, and penetrate the market further. It also has an implication uh, at, in terms of the ecosystem and how you partner. So I wonder if you could talk about platform, what it means to you, you know, the API economy, however you want to take that. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, a platform, first of all, I think, you know, if you're starting a disruptive technology company, being hyper-focused on delivering something that's better and faster in every dimension, it had to be 10X uh, in every dimension. So when we started, we said, let's start with 
tier one block, mission critical data workloads uh, with a product, you know, our flash array product. It was the fastest growing product in storage, I think, of all time, and it still continues to be uh, a great contributor, and it should be a multi-billion dollar business by itself. Um, but what customers are looking for is that same consumer-like or cloud-like experience, all of the benefits of that simplicity and performance you know, across their entire data set. And so as we think about um, you know, providing value to customers, we want to make sure we capture as much of that 99.5% of the data uh, and make it online and make it affordable, regardless of whether it's block, file, or object, or regardless if it's tier one, tier two, and tier three. We talk about this notion of a shared accelerated storage platform because we want to have all of the applications hit it without any compromise. And in an architecture that we provided today, um, you can do that. So as we think about partnering, we want to go, uh, in our strategy, we want to go get as much of the data as we possibly can and make it usable and affordable to bring online, um, and then partner with an API-first um, open approach. Uh, there's a ton of orchestration tools that are out there. There's great automation. Uh, we have a deep integration with ACI at, at Cisco. Um, whatever management and orchestration tools that our customer wants to use, we want to make those available. And so, as you look at our Flash Array, Flash DAC, Airy, and Flash Blade technologies, all of them have an API open first approach. Um, and so a lot of what we're talking about with our cloud integrations uh, is how do we actually leverage orchestration and how do we now allow and make it easy for customers to move data in and out of whatever clouds they may want to run from. Um, you know, one of the key premises to the business was with this exploding data growth and uh, whether it's 30, 40, or 50 zettabytes of data over the next you know, five years, uh, there's only two and a half or three zettabytes of internet connectivity in those same period of time. Which means that companies, you know, and there's not enough data platform, or data resources, to actually handle all of it. So the temporal nature of the data, where it's created, what a data center looks like, is going to be highly distributed. Um, and it's going to be multi-cloud. And so we wanted to provide an architecture and a platform that removed the trade-offs and the bottlenecks, while also being open and allowing um, customers to take advantage of Redshift and, you know, and, all, you know, and Red Hat and all the different container, container technologies um, and platform as a service technologies that exist, uh, you know, that are completely changed the way we could access the data. So it, we're part of an ecosystem and it needs to be API and open first. So you had ServiceNow on stage today and they're obviously a platform company. Mm. I mean, anytime they do M&A, they, they bring that company into their platform, their applications that they build are all part of that, that, that platform. So should we think about Pure, if we think about Pure as a platform company, yeah. does that mean, I mean, one of your major competitors is consolidating its, its yep. portfolio. Should we think of you going forward as a platform company, in other words, you're gonna, not going to have a stovepipe set of, of products, or is that asking too much as you go get to your next level of milestone? Well, we think we're, we're largely there in many, in many respects. Um, you know, if you look at um, any of the competitive technologies that are out there, you know, they have a different operating system and a different customer experience for their block products, their file products, and their, uh, their object products, et cetera. So we wanted to have you know, a shared system that had the similar attributes um, from, a, from, a, you know, from a storage perspective, um, and then provide a very consistent customer experience with our cloud-based Pier 1 platform. And so um, the combination of our system, you hear Bill, Bill Serretta talk about, you have to do different things you know, for different protocols to be able to get the efficiencies and the data services people want, but ultimately you need to abstract that into a customer experience that's seamless. And so our Pier 1 cloud-based software allows for a consistent experience. Um, the fact that you have a, you know, uh, you know, one application that's leveraging block and one application that's leveraging unstructured tool sets, you, you want to be able to have that be in a shared accelerated storage platform. That's why Gartner's talking about that, right? You know, is that you, now you can do it with a solid state world. So, um, so th you know, it's super key you know, to say, hey look, we want one consistent customer experience regardless of what data tier it used to be on or what protocol it is. Uh, and we do that through our Pure One cloud-based platform. You guys have been pretty bullish for a long time now where competition is concerned. Mm. Uh, we, when we talk uh, about AWS, you know, Angie Jassy always talks about they look forward, they're not looking at Oracle and things like that. How, what's that like at Pure? You guys really kind of, you know, you've been also very bullish recently about NVMe. Yeah. Are you looking forward uh, together with your partners and listening to the voice of the customer and versus looking at you know, what's blue over the corner? <laughs> uh, yeah, so first of all, we have a lot of respect for companies that get big. One of my uh, mentors told me one time that they got big because they did something well. Uh, and so we have a lot of respect uh, for the ecosystem and companies that, that build to scale. We obviously want to be one of those and are already doing that. Um, but, I, but I think it's also important to, um, to, 
to listen and to be part of the community. And so we've always wanted to be the pioneers. You know, we always wanted to be the innovators. We always wanted to challenge conventions. And one of the reasons why we founded the company, why Kaz and Hayes founded the company uh, originally, was because they saw that there was a there was a bottleneck. It was a media level bottleneck. And in order to remove that, you needed to write a file system that was purpose built um, for the new media, whatever it was going to be. We chose um, solid state because it was a forty billion dollar industry, thanks to our consumer products and devices. So it was a cost curve where R and D was going to happen by you know Samsung and Toshiba and Micron and all those guys that we can ride that curve down, allowing us to be able to get more and more of the data that's out there. And so we founded the company with the premise that you know you, know, you need to remove that bottleneck and you can drive innovation that was 10x better in every dimension. Uh, but we also recognize in doing so um, that by putting an evergreen ownership model in place, um, it can fundamentally change the business model uh, that customers were really frustrated by over the last 25 years. It was fair because, you know, disk has lots of moving parts, it gets slower with the more data you put on, et cetera, and so you pass those maintenance expenses and software onto customers, um, but in a solid state world, you didn't need that, right? And so what we wanted to do was actually, in addition to provide innovation that was 10x better, we wanted to provide a business model uh, that was evergreen and cloud-like uh, in every dimension. Well, those two forces were very disruptive to the competitors. Um, um, and so it's very, very hard to take you know, a file system sort of um, that's 25 years old and retrofit it to be able to, to really get the full value uh, of what the stack can provide. So, so we focus on innovation, we focus on what the markets are doing, uh, and we focus on our customer requirements and where we anticipate the use cases to be. Um, and then, you know, we like to compete too. You know, we're, we're a company to, of folks that, that love to win, um, but ultimately the real focus here is on enabling our customers to be successful and innovating forward. And so, less about looking on the sidelines on who's blue and who's green, et cetera. But you said it before, at, at, when you were a startup, you, you had to be 10x better yeah. because those incumbents, even though it was an older operating system, people's processes were wired to that, so yeah. you had to give them a, an incentive to do that. Yeah. But you have been first in a number of things. I mean, Flash itself, the sort of all Flash at a spinning disk price, yeah. Evergreen, you guys set the mark on that. NVMe, you're doing it again with yeah. no premium. I mean, everybody's going to follow. You can look back and say, look, we were first, we led, yeah, yeah. we're the innovator. You're doing some things in cloud, which are, are similar. Yeah. Um, obviously, this is you're doing this on purpose, but it's not just getting close to your customers. There's got to be a technology and architectural enabler mm -hmm. for you guys. Is that well, fair? yeah, I mean, that, it's software. You know, at the end of the day, if you, if you write a file system that's purpose built for a new media, you think about the inefficiencies of that media and the benefits of that media. And so we knew it was going to be memory, we knew it was going to be silicon. Uh, it behaves differently, reads are effectively free, uh, you know, writes are expensive, right? Uh, and so that means you need, need to write something that's different. And so, um, you know, it's NVMe you know, that we've been plumbing and working on for three years that provides 44,000 parallel access points, massive parallelism, which enables these next generation of applications. And so, yeah, we have been talking about that and inventing um, you know, ways to be able to take full advantage of that. There's 3D Crosspoint and there's you know, SCM and all kinds of really interesting technologies that are coming down the line that we want to be able to take advantage of and future-proof for our customers. But in order to do that, you have to have a software platform that allows for it. And that's where we, our competitive advantage really resides, is in the software. Yeah, well there are a lot of smart companies in Silicon Valley and, yeah. and outside of Silicon Valley. Yeah. And you guys, like I say, have achieved that escape velocity and so it's Pretty impressive, congratulations. Well, thank you, we're just getting started and we really appreciate all the work you guys do, so thanks for being here. Yeah, and we just, just a couple days ago with the Q1 FY19, 40% year over year growth, you added 300 more customers, now at 4,800 customers globally, so momentum. Thank you, thank you. Well, we only do it um, if we're helping our customers one day at a time. Uh, you know, I will tell you that uh, this whole customer first philosophy, a lot of customers, a lot of companies talk about it, um, but it truly has to be integrated into the DNA of the business from the founders. And you know, Cause's whole pitch at the very beginning of this was we're going to change the media, which is going to be able to transform the business model, uh, but ultimately we want to make this as intuitive as an iPhone. You know, infrastructure should just work. Um, and so we have this focus on delivering simplicity uh, and delivering um, ownership that's future-proofed from the very beginning. And that, you know, that sort of permeates. And so as we think about our growth, our growth has happened because our customers are buying more stuff from us, right? If you look at our underneath the covers on our growth, 70 plus percent of our growth every single quarter comes from customers buying more stuff. And so, um, you know, as we think about how we partner and we think about how we innovate, you know, we're going to continue to build and innovate uh, in new areas. We're going to uh, we're going to keep partnering. You know, the data protection stack. We've got great partners like Veeam and Cohesity and Rubrik and that are out there. Um, um, and we're going to acquire. You know, we do have a, a billion dollars of cash in the bank to be able to go do that. And so, uh, we're going to listen to our customers 
partners on where they want us to do that, uh, and that's going to guide us for the future. And expansion overseas. I mean, North America is what seventy percent of your business. Is that right? Rough is and that tough. Correct? Yeah, we had twenty eight percent. Yeah, yeah. No, it's you know any any mature B two B systems company should line up to be 55, 45, right. 55 North America, forty five in line with GDP and I, uh, in line with IT spend. So we made investments uh, from the beginning, uh, knowing we wanted to be an independent company, knowing we wanted to support global two thousand companies. You have to have operations across multiple countries. And so um, globalization is always going to be key for us. We're going to continue our march uh, on doing that. Delivering evergreen from an orange center. Pat, <laughs> thanks so much for joining Dave and I on the show this thanks, morning. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks, Dave. Nice to see you guys. We are the Cube live from Pure Accelerate 2018 from San Francisco. I'm Lisa Martin for Dave Vellante. Stick around. We'll be right back with our next guest.